the last thing we left off on was Ruth when uh, she and her father, G.H., came to the door and we discussed the number 96. 96 also is associated with the number 76 and we saw the 76 in the beginning of the film on the 76ers cup and then we see the 76 again when they're exiting the freeway. I really think the 76 stands for when the United States was established because when you have the 76 exiting the freeway for point comfort you also have the other exit for Fort Moss Road, Fort Moss, uh, and I said Fort Moss, but Fort Moss was the first legally sanctioned free African settlement in the United States. But it was cool that they put that little trinket there. So that's when I said, okay, that 76 represents um, 1776 when America was founded. The 96 that's on Ruth's shoulder, yes, it means the beginning and ending of things and family, but it also is the representation of the 96 that is on the monument sign. I think that's what you call it, a monument sign. Now, also in this same scene, I noticed several things. Okay, so there's a division, right? The 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 uh, cinematography, you have the um, Scots on one side, and then you have the Sanfords on another side. Now, further into part two of the curve, you, this is what made me pay attention to this and notice this. When Clay is driving, he passes up something called Tammy Farm. So I went down this <laughs> wild goose trace of trying to figure out what is Tammy Farm. And I came up with the Gettysburg and all of this stuff. But what, what dawned on me was that the name Scott and Sanford, Dred Scott versus Sanford, and the chief ruler was Roger Tanney in that case. So on March 6th in 1857, in the Dred Scott versus John Sanford case, the United States Supreme Court Chief Justice Roger B. Taney ruled that African Americans were not and could not be considered citizens. Taney wrote that the founders' words in the Declaration of Independence, all men are created equal, were not intended to apply to blacks. Blacks could not vote, travel, or even fall in love and marry of their own free will. And it was just interesting that the director would split the screen and show those two families in the versus stance. Good directing, good cinematography. Now, later on in the same scene, we see the close-up shot on the alcohol when uh, GH is making a drink. Um, and then further along in part two, we see the close-up shots on the coffee. Now. This is another history lesson that they, they dropped in there. What we know about alcohol and coffee is this. Rum was an essential part of the cargo of slave ships. Traders exchanged cast of rum for human beings. Also, before the emancipation, planners supplemented the slave diet with rum. And after the emancipation, wages were often partially pa paid in rum. So rum served as uh, a reward of tasks and it was used to accustom people to enslavement. High coffee plays into this. By the beginning of 19th century, America demand for coffee had increased drastically due to the aftermath of the Boston Tea Party and a strong desire to drink coffee more rather than British tea. So the production of coffee in colonized regions began to increase. And with that, the number of slaves working in the plantations did as well. So let's discuss the pictures because now we're in a scene where this is the first time we see the black and white pictures change. So in the beginning of the film, we see Amanda coming to the home and behind her, there's an image of a black and white picture. There's four spiked white waves right in this black space then in the scene when the picture changes it looks like a slave ship or a ship entering 
into this black space. But this time, on the left side of the picture, the, the white space is flooding more into the black image. But you do see a ship that is clearly a ship going into the black space. In the third image, you can only see specks of the black space in that last image. Almost a checker of the black and white space kind of coexisting together. Um, then in the next scene, you see Archie and uh, Rose. Archie had on the Obey shirt. And the Obey shirt comes from the movie They Live. And the purpose of that advertisement for Obey was the obedience of consumption or the obedience and consumption. And throughout the film, we see that Archie was so consumed with sex and girls and his phone. He was a slave to his thoughts. So then they go into the shed. You know, I had a friend ask me about what did I think the shed represented. The shed is a representation of slave quarters. Our world started with slavery, unfortunately, but we, we try to hide it. And that was what is seen when Ruth goes into the room to vape. You have all these pictures. Now, that is something that Amanda mentions. When they go into the home the first time and, and GH says that this is their home, guess what? There's no pictures on the wall. But interesting enough, the room that Ruth goes into that was locked away were all these pictures of the history of their family. And that's kind of like what's happening in America right now. Now GH is a puzzling soul because GH, what's interesting about him is that he was more so trying to play along to get along this whole time. You know, he was more comforting to Amanda and her family and making sure that they were okay then his daughter when his daughter was upset that maybe his her mom could possibly be dead I didn't understand that but he said something that was very interesting in the scene um, after Amanda explains to Ruth and she tells her dad about the notifications and there again we see the number three and she got three notifications about possible cyber attacks. And again, I told you three is a representation of communication, connection. But he says he's going to the Huxleys. So I took this to mean that this was Aldous Huxley. And the reason for, in my research of finding out who Aldous Huxley was, he was an English born writer whose masterpiece novel, Brave New World, depicted a future in which universal happiness is only achieved by thoroughly dehumanizing humanity. But he also said a few things in uh, some interviews that I found. And one of the things that he said was, man is the victim of his own technology. Technology was made for man and not man for technology. He also made a quote that said, people will come to love their obsession to adore the technologies that undo their capacity to think. Technology progress has merely provided us with more efficient means for going backwards. Next, we get this, we get the energy of, of Rose, the little girl, and she has on this NASA shirt. Now, I know a lot of people went into this deep dive of all oh, symbolism of obey NASA. But for me, in this case, uh, Rose had on this NASA shirt because she was someone who was an explorer in a sense, right? Um, she was discovering things. You know, in the end, she discovers the, the underground bunker or the bunker in the home. She discovers the food. She is the first person to have interaction with the deer. And, you know, as far as the deer are concerned, we do hear on the radio that uh, the animals are acting odd because of the disaster and it's giving them a strange migration pattern, you know. But the thing is, um, if you ever seen this, uh, there's this viral video of this man saving this deer and um, this deer comes up to him, you know, and he's trying to understand what the deer wants. The deer is like signaling for him to follow him. 
the man follows the deer. The man notices that the deer's uh, baby is caught into some wire. And when he helps the, the baby out of the wire, the deer walks up to him with the baby after he gets back in his car. It ha makes the baby show him gratitude. So I believe that the deers are approaching Amanda and later on Ruth to give them a message. It's a message. Um, deers also um, are spiritually connected to God, right? Um, it's a message. Now the flamingos in the pool, you know, a lot of people were saying some of the weirdest stuff that I've seen. But I don't think a lot of people know this, but at one time, okay, wait, going back, it does represent the uh, whole thing about migration, the, the weird migration of the animal patterns. But at one time, flamingos were a staple in America that they were a part of the American dream. When you bought a home, you put a pink flamingo in your yard, right? A lot of people must not know that because I hadn't heard anyone discuss that part of our history. Um, and then eventually, I think because of the hippies taking it over or whatever, and then it started meaning different things further along the line that changed. But initially, flamingos were a part of the American dream. Then we had the Kevin Bacon character. And the name Danny also is short for Daniel. Um, in the Bible, Daniel was the interpreter of apocalyptic dreams. And I found it ironic that they chose that name because he is the one to piece everything together for us. He's the one to tell us, hey, Y'all saying it's these people. I think it's the Koreans. But now that I'm looking at this paper, I'm interpreting it. It could be all of these people that's coming together to cause war on us. Danny was the one with the message. He pieced all of these things together for us toward the end of the film. Danny gave dropped so many jewels to them. He told them that there was a potential war ahead. They wasn't privy to that information. They just were assuming. He also shared with them why the the waves, why old boy teeth fell out of his mouth. That was he was he was giving them the message. He also shared with them to go to the thorn house. They were gonna have food and shelter there. And here we have Miss Dora the Explorer Rose, who finds the thorn home. Thorn is the most common surname in the United States. We know that thorns are a natural defense or protection for roses. And this all ties in together because down a rabbit hole I go. I found a program that aids in protecting children from sex trafficking by using technology. Thorn, um, the Digital Defenders of Children, Previously known as DNA Foundation is an international anti-human trafficking organization that works to address the sexual exploitation of children. The founders is Ashton Kutcher and Demi Moore. It was founded in 2009. Their slogan is, we build tools to defend children from sexual abuse. They also have another tagline, we turn technology into hope for the most vulnerable kids at thorn we form long-term relationships build tools to fight sexual abuse we want our partners at tech companies and law enforcement and at ngos to have what they need to help kids so that is thorn this is significant because it ties in the slavery it ties in technology and with Rose going to the home, it ties in the theme of protection. Now in certain cultures, the red door symbolizes different things. So a red front door in the American culture, during the Civil War, a red door meant a home was a safe haven for escaped slave traveling the Underground Railroad. 
And then, you know, when she when Rose is walking through the hallway, you see the red over the panels, meaning blood over the door for protection. We know that that's what that means in the Bible, right? Then when she's turning the knob, the red knob, um, and you see the word Commodus was a Roman emperor who, whose reign marked the end of peace and stability within the Roman Empire. And after his death, it triggered a power struggle amongst various military leaders and fractions who aimed to seize control of the Roman Empire. And this was called the Year of the Five Emperors. Another thing about uh, Commodus is that I mean, if we want to relate it to the thorn, he had over 600 concubines, 300 men, 300 women, and he would kill people once he stopped trusting them. While everyone is focused on the theme and the imagery of racism in this film, the film is way deeper than that. The film is about our connection with one another, our prejudiceness, the origin of how America got to be how it is, where it could possibly go if a civil war was to break out, how war could be placed upon us. It makes you question, how would you survive? It makes you question, do you really care about if your neighbor is black, white, Hispanic, Asian, or whatever? What, what, what would you really care about? It also brings you the current time of the major problem that we have with human sex trafficking and the sex trafficking of children. The ending was perfect. You already knew that uh, Clay and GH and Archie were going to find Rose because Danny had just told them to go to the Thorn home. You already knew that Amanda and Ruth was going to find Rose because they just saw the thorn home in the distance. And because the imagery of the red door, and we know that not only does the red door mean safe haven and protection, it also means welcome. So the ending was perfect with the song from Friends. And I hope you enjoy my review. There's so much more that I could have covered, but this review was getting long and I'm getting sick. So you guys, let me know what you think and thank you for watching.